folks! I ate some sketchy deli meat that I found in my refrigerator late last night and I haven't been feeling too good today. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. But that doesn't mean that there's still not video game news to talk about because today I want to talk about five, yes five, different stories. Two things that are happening right now in the world of video games are changes. While Tupac might not have seen any changes, we're seeing big changes with both E3 and GameStop. Then I want to talk about Bandai Namco potentially bringing back some big franchises with some remasters that have me definitely very excited. Marvelous has actually backed down on their copyright claim stance. And finally, the Super Nintendo controllers were available for the Nintendo Switch online service, and it honestly became an absolute nightmare to get them. So what's going on with all these stories? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about what's going on in the world of video game news. So the first story I want to talk about are the changes happening with E3 2020. Obviously E3 2019 was kind of a different year for the video game industry. Sony of course was not at this event, which made many people wonder, is E3 really starting to lose its luster? Sure you have mainstream media that pays attention to the video game industry during E3, but are things like E3 even necessary anymore when you have the rise of these digital events? Of course Sony has the state of play, Xbox has their show, I don't remember the name of it because I really don't like it, it takes too damn long. And and of course you have Nintendo Direct. Well there are some major changes coming to E3 2020 to sort of circumvent the way that the video game industry is shifting towards and honestly it sounds kind of weird to me. So basically E3 2020 sounds a bit more like a Gamescom style event more so than a traditional press event. There's going to be newly conceived and designed show floor areas. There's going to be a digital E3 experience. So there will be an industry and a media day. They're trying to accompany more players and more fans into these events. There's going to be PR opportunities for companies to enhance their brand, opportunities to market directly to players, social media influencer engagement, celebrity engagement programs, attendee app scheduling, Quay Entertainment to allow for line engagement, paid media sponsorship or partnerships, and photo ops and video game tournaments. So really this to me sounds more like a traditional video game convention, more so than a traditional video game show floor and environment. And will that really work out for E3? Obviously E3's 2019 attendance was definitely way down. There was that whole thing where all of the people and press people that went to E3 had all their information doxxed and put all over on the internet, so a lot of people were not happy with that. Can this potentially save E3, this shift? Will it actually help the event? I'm not quite sure. Honestly, I still have no desire to ever attend an E3 event because you really get a better experience, I feel, at home, and I don't feel like there's really a way for E3 to sort of encompass that thing. Sure, it's cool to be there for these big announcements and stuff, but as a content creator, I would rather be at home watching all these conferences and being able to cover them from my house than being able to do it from the show floor because by the time you get home you end up having really no time to sort of do it and everyone's already talked about these events so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for E3 obviously they're trying to have more social media influencers because there's a big rise in that so I don't know I don't know I think it could potentially work out but will it be sustainable for them that'll really be remain to be seen next up I want to talk a bit about Ocean Horn 2 now if you're not familiar with the Ocean Horn franchise the original Ocean Horn was originally a mobile game that ended up coming out on home consoles. I ended up playing the Nintendo Switch version of the game and it definitely felt like a Legend of Zelda experience, but I think it was a pretty good game. It seemed to get pretty solid review scores no matter what platform it was on, whether it was the Switch, the PS4, Xbox One, Steam, or mobile devices, and Oceanhorn 2 admittedly looked very exciting. It looked like they were really progressing the game and really making it a more fleshed out experience, a bigger world, a more adventurous world for you to explore, more enemies, more areas to explore as well, so I was kind of looking forward to this game honestly. It was a game that I thought was going to look really cool, but now Oceanhorn has been announced as an Apple Arcade exclusive. Apple Arcade. Now hopefully this is just a time sort of exclusive for Apple Arcade because I really feel like this game would benefit on being on home consoles but if you're not familiar with what Apple Arcade is basically it is Apple's new video game service for five dollars a month you can have access to a whole bunch of different games so this really means nothing to me and to sort of pigeonhole your audience by only being available on Apple devices via the Apple Arcade app is kind of worrisome to me. I'm sure the company got paid very well but I do hope that this is just a time exclusive Exclusive. I think this game looks really good and I really want to play this on a traditional console with a traditional controller instead of having to have an Apple device and then using the Apple Arcade store. So yes, Oceanhorn 2 has been announced as an Apple Arcade exclusive, but hopefully, hopefully it's just a timed exclusive. 
Next up, I want to talk about Bandai Namco for a little bit. Obviously, Bandai Namco is a company that is rich in lineage when it comes to video game franchises. They have so many awesome video game franchises, and many of them we have not seen in quite a while. But what's interesting is some new patents have been discovered that are giving hopes to fans of these franchises that new or remastered games could be potentially coming. So basically, last night, a bunch of different trademarks were discovered for various Bandai Namco franchises with Encore at the end of it. The three that really stuck out to me were Mr. Driller Encore, Klonoa Encore, and Splatterhouse Encore. Now you might be wondering what is the significance of the Encore in this, but what's interesting is last year Katamari Damacy Reroll came out on the Nintendo Switch and Steam, and this was of course a remaster of the original PS2 game brought over to the Switch and PC, but this game was originally trademarked as Katamari Damacy Encore. So it looks like the Encore series is basically bringing back older games, remastering them for modern platforms, and then putting them out on modern platforms. Now some of these should be very exciting for you. Obviously Splatterhouse is something we have not seen in quite a while, the last Splatterhouse game was on the PS3 and it really wasn't that good. It really wasn't a Splatterhouse game. And of course you have Klonoa. Now Klonoa was a very popular franchise on the original PlayStation 1, receiving two games on the PlayStation 1. And then the first game was then brought over to the Nintendo Wii. But of course people didn't buy it because it wasn't a party game. But I actually owned Klonoa on the Wii and I thought it was a fantastic game. So it's definitely very exciting to see the potential of these games getting remastered. I hope we hear more information about this. I really want to see Klonoa and Splatterhouse on modern consoles. So my fingers are crossed on this. I hope it's going to be something good. Next up, I want to talk about the changes going on within the world of GameStop. Now, obviously, GameStop is having to adjust to the digital age, and they're having a bit of trouble with it. A few days ago on the channel, we did a video in defense of GameStop, because I don't want GameStop to go out of business. I like going to GameStops. Do I think there are too many stores? Sure. Do I think they lost their vision along the way? Sure. But I think they realize that, and I think that they understand that they have to adapt to the modern gaming era in order to stay relevant. And it seems like they are, because we got some footage of a GameStop concept store, and honestly, it looks pretty good. Now this uh, footage is coming to us from IGN. IGN has been able to confirm that this footage is of a real GameStop location and look at it. It looks great. It looks like it's going to have a much cleaner aesthetic. The store itself is much cleaner. There's a lot less clutter in there and of course there's a retro gaming lounge area that will be in this store. So I think this is a step in the right direction for GameStop. Do I think every GameStop needs to accompany this redesign? No, I don't think that would make any sense. I think what you need to do with this is in heavily populated areas where there's like seven game stops within 20 miles you need to make one of your stores like this and basically make that your community store that's the store where you hold events at that's the store where you can hold tournaments at because really the community aspect of video games is so important and that's something that GameStop has definitely lost along the way so I'm really looking forward to seeing more information on this rollout I hope this isn't just a concept I hope this is something that comes to fruition because in the long run I think this could actually help GameStop it might not save them but if it helps them for quite a while that's cool in my book Next up, I want to give an update on a story that we covered yesterday on the channel involving Marvelous. Now, Marvelous, of course, just released Damon X Machina onto the Nintendo Switch, but you haven't seen too many videos about Damon X Machina on YouTube. Now, why is that? Because Marvelous of Japan was copyright striking all of these videos because of the footage used within the game, and it was just absolutely ridiculous. Then we talked about how they were striking control videos as well because they're publishing that game in Japan, and it was just a really messy situation. It really discouraged a lot of content creators from covering this game because you're having to sync time and effort into playing this game and then covering this game for what? For basically nothing. So what's very interesting about this is a lot of content creators have been very vocal about this. I remember OJ from Player Essence has been talking about this ever since Damon X Machina was first unveiled. Ever since Damon X Machina was first showed off in a Nintendo Direct, that snippet of the Nintendo Direct was not able to be monetized because of claims from Marvelous Japan. And OJ from Player Essence has been very vocal about this ever since that incident has happened. And you can actually see on Twitter where him and Marvelous of the US have been going back back and forth on this. Well, Marvelous of the US has actually been working with Marvelous of Japan to get these copyright claims removed, and it seems like some progress has been made. Now, you're not able to do certain cutscenes from Damon X Machina, and there's still some music issues as well, but as of right now, it looks like you're able to actually use Damon X Machina gameplay footage in video. So this is a big win for video gamers on YouTube who want to cover this game. Now you're able to do such. It would have been nice if they would have done this before the release of the game so that people could have gotten hyped of the game, but obviously better late than never and hopefully this practice will continue in the future as well. Marvelous of the US also said that control issues are being worked out as well so that you can actually not get any copyright issues on control. So good job to Marvelous of the US, you know, good job working with Marvelous of Japan and hopefully this is a good sign for things going forward because like I said in yesterday's video, Marvelous is actually doing a lot of games for the Switch so they really need all the publicity they can get. 
And finally, of course, Super Nintendo games have finally hit the Nintendo Switch Online service, and during that presentation we learned that the Super Nintendo controller would indeed be coming to the Nintendo Switch, much like we saw with the NES controller. Unlike the NES controllers, these were going to be sold individually instead of in packs of two, and you could pick them up for $29.99. Well, these controllers went up for sale on Nintendo's website yesterday, and if you were a Nintendo Switch Online member, you had the ability to purchase these controllers. And I say had the ability to purchase these controllers, because I feel like Nintendo might have botched this a little bit. As of right now, these controllers are completely sold out. They're temporarily out of stock, with hopefully more stock being introduced. So how did this actually happen? You would think that Nintendo would look at the numbers and say, okay, we have this many Nintendo Switch Online subscribers, we should probably make about this number of controllers. Well, the problem was you could order more than one controller through this. Now, that sort of makes sense, to be honest with you. Obviously, some of these games are two-player games, so a lot of people might want two controllers. But you could actually order up to four, yes, four controllers. So I feel like a lot of people that had a Nintendo Switch Online account may have ordered four controllers, knowing that this would be an item that would be hard to get initially, and hoping to scalp this item. There's really no rhyme or reason for Nintendo to have offered four of these controllers to Nintendo Switch Online members at the launch of this. Maybe down the road when people have already gotten their controllers, but with these games, you only need two controllers. So why are we offering four controllers to people when obviously people like to scalp Nintendo stuff? I kind of feel like Nintendo botched this because there's a lot of people who did not have a chance to pick up these controllers that obviously obviously want these controllers. Now luckily I was able to pick one up because I kind of want to check it out but it's definitely a very interesting situation. A lot of people are upset by this and I can definitely understand why but hopefully Nintendo will get some more of these in production so that you guys can pre-order these as well. Alright, so those were five, I guess technically six, different stories that I wanted to cover in today's video. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of everything. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. I'm going to sit on the toilet some more because my stomach really isn't feeling all that great. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.